Hey, this is Jason with 4W Knives. We have some rusted nails that we are going to turn into a knife. Uh, the nails came out of a Molly B. Denim mine on the Alpine Loop in Colorado, and they have a significance to the customer that asked me to put them together. First step, you want to fill this full of white vinegar, just what you buy out of the store. It is good for removing the rust. I was going to use some muriatic acid, but I was afraid that it may eat through them too much because these are pretty worn out. To add to the look, they said it was okay, but I'm going to add a few of my own just run-of-the-mill uh, nails. So, anyways. I let the nails soak in the vinegar for about two weeks. Uh, finally got back out in the shop and I'm gonna use some acetone to clean off all the gunk. I uh, ended up doing two treatments of the vinegar and they were still super nasty. So uh, it kind of preludes. I end up getting into some problems with the billet. Uh, you'll see that as we get to it, but I kind of figure it was because these things were so nasty. Uh, it was just almost impossible to get good solid steel but again i like taking chances so uh, that was part of the appeal to this process so the white spray paint will coat the inside of the canister and prevent the steel from sticking to the canister uh, this is a pretty good process. You can also use white out. Uh, for the steel powder, we're using 1084 from Jantz. Uh, I was hoping this would get a good contrast. So as I fill this, we have to make sure that it is nice and tight. All the powder sinks to the bottom so there's no voids. And honestly, I was pretty nervous uh, through this process because these are antique nails or one-of-a-kind nails and not much of a chance to redo this if I mess it up, which I do. So the billet took a little bit of persuading to get out of the can, uh, but once I get it out, uh, everything looks great. It's got very few cracks. It still has a few, which almost all canisters that I do, do have, and then we have to just grind them down, as you see later. Uh, but overall, I was excited. Uh, everything looked to hold together well. So we just take it back to the press, and we're going to thin it out and get it ready to do a sand my uh, type of billet. All right, thought I would show some of these cracks. This is not abnormal. It's pretty routine. So what I'm gonna do is I'll take the angle grinder and I'll come in and I will grind down any of these cracks and then reforge it back into billet shape. All right, so looks like a pretty solid piece. You can see where I've ground out all the cracks, or at least the larger cracks. So now I'm going to put it in the forge, try to make it as even of a billet as I can, and we'll uh, also narrow it down, or uh, thin it down as well.
Okay, here's the finished billet. See, it turned out pretty good. I've got one troubled area right here that I would say, but it's not even that bad. So my plan, we're gonna go in and clean it up on the surface grinder, cut it at six inches, and we are going to do a sand mice. So that'll be the next step. I'll uh, maybe show a little bit of the surface grinding, but most of it's just gonna be boring cleanup. So I want to make sure that I get enough of a billet to make two of these. It's uh, just right around seven inches long total. Here's the thickness on the calipers. It comes out to roughly 1.05. I am going to drop that just down to one. It is six inches long and about one and a quarter wide. So here's how you figure it. Come around here so maybe you can see it. All right, so current thickness is one. You multiply that by 1.25, which is the current width, times six which comes out to 7.5. Then you take that 7.5, divide it by the new variable, which I'll quit on the roller mill when it's around 0.18. Then divide that by, should be about 1.5 inches wide, and that will give me the new variable, which is 27. So it is guesstimated. Of course, there's a lot of loss with the forging and stuff like that that I should be able to get a billet of about 27 inches long by roughly one and a half inches wide. It will not be exact, but that gives me an idea of what I'm working with. If I come out around 20, I know that I'm in the good uh, because I need about 14 inches to make both of these knives. Hope that makes sense. It is something that's helped me. A lot of guys will use Play-Doh to uh, get those numbers. They'll take Play-Doh and they'll make it to this size and then they'll reshape it to make sure that they have enough. Uh, the, the math, I'm just figuring volume for it. Uh, that's just seemed a lot easier. So anyways, maybe that'll help you, maybe it won't. I thought I would show the finished billet before we commence the uh, stock removal. So you can see it come out to about 21 inches long. That's because I made it wider. I knew I had some room to uh, play with the length, so I went ahead and made it a little thicker and about half an inch wider just to make sure that I had good seal whenever I uh, do the stock removal. So, um, Anyways, the numbers came out pretty close.
sad and very unfortunate event occur. As you can see, I got all shaped pretty good. Everything's looking good. I pulled it out of the temper and they both had a pretty good warp. I couldn't fix the warp without heating it up, so I put it back in the forge to do the process over. And as soon as I put them back in the heat, you can see that little crack. It goes down to here. This one I went ahead and quenched, and it went ahead and split all the way up. I don't know how well you can see it. You'll have to take my word for it. The other one basically split in the exact same spot. Again, I don't know if you can see it. But uh, that's all the antique nails that I had, as I had told you. So, only thing I can think to do is I'm going to clean this up just a little bit more. And I'm going to just go in and I'm going to chop these knives up, put them in a canister, and do the whole process again. It's something I do not want to do, but uh, I don't have any more of those nails, and I want this to be a knife made out of those nails. So, technically, it still will be. It'll just change the pattern quite a bit. Um, a couple of the things that I'm going to do different. I am not going to do my uh, rough grind until uh, after I quench. So, I always do it before, and I just think with these two different steels, it's just asking for trouble, and it kind of put me in this spot. If I wouldn't have had the warp, I wouldn't have had to reheat it. Uh, and you can even see here, this one is still warped a little bit even after all of that. So, uh, anyways, I'll, I'll speed through this process as far as filming it and try to get it back to the original shape. All right, so take two, got them to six inches. Went back with the ADCRV for the core again, and we'll top it off. Cross our fingers, hope this all sticks together. Uh, I'm making some adjustments on the way that I did the first one on this one. So hopefully uh, everything will pan out. Okay, so we have it reshaped, ready to go. So my plan to avoid the complications we had with the first batch is I have not done my rough grind yet. So we're just gonna quench it the way it is. Uh, and I'm also going to quench it in Parks AAA instead of Parks 50. Uh, I did some research and ADCRV is better done in AAA. So I'm gonna do that and hopefully it comes out straight. Uh, one of the things about not doing the bevels uh, is I won't have any twisting at the bevels. That's where I had the warp the last time was right. The top of the knife towards the point, it kind of was twisting. Well, that made it really difficult to fix because I'd already had the bevel. Uh, so I'm hoping that if it warps, it's easier to fix, so I don't have to uh, go through that big reheat treat and take a chance of this splitting again. So, uh, fingers crossed, hopefully, all comes out well. 
Alright. Moment of truth. intact so that one does check the next one oh i'm relieved as long as i don't run into any other problems it appears that we are good to go all right All right, we are finished with the rusted, rusty, rusty nails that we turned into a pair of what I'm calling ringtail knives. Uh, these are the shape, rather. I got the idea from Cormulus. He had sent a few to me. Uh, his were a little smaller. These are a little larger profile, uh, but the basic idea I got from him calling them ringtail uh, knives. They came out sharp. Uh, they sharpened up nicely. See the pattern's not near as good as what we had hoped, uh, but I think that was just one rusted up material that just didn't, didn't uh, forge weld as clean as what you would like. And uh, cutting up and restacking and going through the process again it lost a lot of its contrast. It's a little bit muddy is how I would discuss, or, uh, describe the look of it. But uh, overall, I'm happy, customer's happy. We got uh, purple heart on this one, red heart on this one. So anyways, I appreciate you watching. You get to see some finished pics here in a minute. Uh, outside of that, have a good one and keep your eye out for a few more videos. And I just want to say thanks again, and I appreciate you watching. You can see this pattern, while it is still unique, it just doesn't quite pop and have the contrast that I would normally have. Uh, but outside of that, we like it.